A pessimist could say that this is a bit of a long shot in the Lone Star State. How hard is it to actually build and launch an entirely new exchange? That's right, Katie. Well, they first have to get approval from regulators. So they will file with the SEC. Once that gets done, they have to actually then gain momentum. They actually have to see the trading start to happen. And whenever you have a new exchange, that really what needs to happen first is that the volumes increase and that incentivizes investors and market makers to route to that exchange. Really, if there's increased liquidity, that means that there's going to be better pricing more often. Uh, and that's why NICE and NASDAQ, in growing their own liquidity, have been able to keep such dominance and keep their volumes so high over time. Yeah, it's a good point, of course, that at the end of the day, it's all about liquidity and also, too, on the timeline here. I mean, there's a lot of steps still. But it's interesting to see this because uh, you know very well that there's a bit of an IPO drought right now. IPO volumes have been very, very mutual. When it comes to the Texas Stock Exchange, I mean, what is the potential vision here for the business in terms of what they're targeting? So it does seem like they're targeting corporations that would go to NICE and NASDAQ, but might be frustrated with some of the new rules and regulations, the compliance that is put in place. Think about NASDAQ's board diversity program that they have put in that might limit some companies that don't meet the th certain threshold that is placed for listing on NASDAQ. If they still want to go public but don't meet the threshold, they might choose the Texas Stock Exchange. That is really what this business is targeting. They want to be an open venue that has less rules, less restrictions than NICE and NASDAQ. They're going to really promote themselves as the welcoming Texas state that is welcoming to companies that might not want to go through the hurdles that they would see in New York. And I mean, this news is interesting in and of itself, but also interesting are some of the backers. Like we said, Citadel, BlackRock, among the investors here. What could be the bet on their part? Are they trying to hedge something here? So this is not the first time that we've seen market makers like Citadel, Virtu, back exchange operations. In 2019, the members exchange, Memex, which is still up and operating, they, along with some of the biggest banks, backed their new exchange that is, again, still in play. And they are taking market share from some of the big incumbents. And we've seen Howard Lutnick's futures exchange that is to launch later this year. That is not in equities, but in futures. But again, this is a big play for participants that might just want more venue, more choice. And there's also sometimes a financial incentive when you are a backer of the exchange. You might get actually more of the the ownership in the exchange if you send more volumes to that venue.